3D20 is out and the literal poster child of this release is the new Feather workflow. And this really is a whole new workflow because it offers tools not only for creating feathers but also for creating a whole plumage, simming and rendering. So let's take a look at all of it. In an empty scene I want to drop down a geo container and dive inside. First of all I want to load in a reference image. As a reference I'm using a Feather Atlas of a European robin that I got from featherbase.info and the link is in the description. To load this in, let's hover the cursor over a viewport, let's hit D to bring up our display options. Let's go to the background tab, go to the top tab and let's load in our reference image, which is again this feather atlas of a European robin. I want to bring down the image scale to a value of 0.1 by 0.1. And I want to bring down the opacity to a value of 0.75. Close this window, let's switch to a top viewport and this here is a feather atlas. And I want to first of all recreate this feather right here. To start creating our feather, let's start searching feather template and I want to use this feather template option right here. Drop this down, wait a bit for it to cook and we should have those three nodes in here. We have a curve node to draw the outlines of a feather. We have a feather shape organize node to organize all those curves. And finally, we have this feather template from shape node, which will create our actual feather. If you zoom out a bit, this node has already created one feather for us. However, I want to draw this from scratch. So let's select a curve, bring up the parameters and reset the operations and start fresh. Let's zoom in on a feather again. Let's go to a handles tool and I first of all want to draw the central shaft. Next, let's work on the barbs. Again, let's start drawing the profile curve and we should see in the background that our feather is already being created. And let's do the other side as well. And now we have a finished base shape. I can also provide additional curves. Let's drop another curve Bezier node for this and let's wire this in the second input. And in here I can control the shape of the barbs. And in this case for this weather, I want to make those barbs a bit steeper. So to do this, let's simply start again from a shaft and draw those feathers a bit steeper and I'm done here. I could use the third input of this feather shape organized node if I would want to create multiple feathers in this node and have a way to organize them and give them different names. However, I'm just sticking to creating one feather with one feather template from shape node right here. Let's tweak some parameters on that feather template from shape. First of all, I want to up the barb density a whole lot. Let's up this to say 500. I also want the shaft density, so the number of points that this bit of a feather here consists of. I want to up this a bit as well. In my case, a value of 25 resulted in a nice number of divisions. I want to tweak the width of the barbs at the tip of the feather and at the root of the feather. And I want to make both of those a bit smaller. Let's make the tip a value of 0 0.001 and the base or the root a value of 0 0.003, like this. And now we have a nice density gradient that starts pretty thin up here and then gets thicker down here. And finally, I want to add a name attribute to my feather. Or I want to tweak this name attribute and therefore I'm going to select this name option down here. This is set up to just use the node name right here and I'm going to name this node long fluffy base like this. And as you can see, I'm definitely a feather expert. At this point in our setup, let's switch back to the perspective viewport and we should take a look at the geometry that this feather consists of because this is actually quite interesting. If you turn on point display, we see something strange. The only bit of actual geometry in this new feather primitive is the central shaft. The barbs don't exist as actual geometry, but are drawn almost like a visualizer in a separate OpenGL script. How does that script know what those barbs should look like? Well, all the attributes that would normally be stored on those barb curves, so position and texture coordinates and color and so on, are now stored as array attributes on those central shaft points. And we can see those if we, for example, bring up the info panel. And in here for a central shaft, we have a UV attribute. And then for all barbs, we have a UV barb L attribute and a UV barb R attribute. And since we have four points stored on those shaft curves, our UV attribute consists of three floats, 
a UV burp L attribute consists of 12 flows. So all the data is stored here. So the data is all there, it's just not stored as geometry, which makes manipulating feathers a whole lot faster. Of course, this new object also needs some new nodes that can work with this data, so let's take a look at those. First of all, there is a feather visualize node that we should take a look at. And this is well what's controlling the visualizer. Also, all those new feather nodes that I'll be dropping down have those three inputs. If you're working on a single feather, you only have to worry about the first one. The other two are only there if you're working with a whole groom, a whole plumage of feathers. But for this feather visualize node, we can choose how we want to see our feather. In this case, right now we are taking a look at all curves. We can also just take a look at the central shaft and we can also display it just as a surface, as a mesh. Let's set this back to curve and keep working. And let's also disable point display. If I'm taking a look at my feather from the front viewport or at a shallow angle, I can see that my feather is completely flat, which is not very realistic. So let's introduce some noise into a feather, strap down a feather noise node. That's why all inputs in here. And at least in my Houdini version, when you first activate this node or set the display flag there, there's a short delay. Some stuff is loaded in the background. However, all other feather noise nodes that we will drop after that, all parameters that we change will update a whole lot faster. And now, once this has cooked, I can see now that my feather isn't as flat anymore and I'm quite happy with the default values here. Also to match our reference, our feather should need to have some clumping down here at the base. So for this, let's use a feather clump node. Call this in, take a look at the result. And by default, this is set up to do a very extreme clumping. We have to tame this node a bit. To tame it, let's first of all work on the frequency. The frequency is the value that controls how many clumps we have on that central shaft. And let's turn this down to a value of seven. Also, we should definitely turn on the amount to create just those little cuts in our feather. And in this case, I want to use a value of 0.4. We can further control this with a fall off. So when this split starts and I want to bring this up in this case to a fall of value of five. Finally, I don't want to have those clumps along the entire length of my feather. I want to just have them concentrated at the base. I can do this by controlling the amount of clumping with a ramp, a ramp that runs from the tip of the feather down to the base. Let's create this. Right now our feathers or clumps are just here at the tip. So let's flip our ramp and let's bring the upper value down to a value of 0.35. And I want to bring the lower value up in this case to a value of 0.1. And now this is my feather. Finally, we have some frizzy barbs right here at the base of a feather. So let's create this as well. I again going to use a feather noise. The values that worked nicely for me is setting the amplitude a lot higher, in this case to a value of 0.1. And working again on the fall off, setting this to a value of five, turning this down a bit, and also increasing the sharp frequency to a value of 100. Then bring down the barb frequency to a value of 0.2 like this. And finally, again, I want to control the amplitude with a ramp to have those frizzy areas only at the base. So let's create a ramp here. Let's flip the direction. And I want to have a value of 0.075 at a position of 0.075. And the last handle I want to have at a value of 0.2, like this. And this is the shaping of my main feather down here. Now, there might be cases where those new feather nodes don't have the functionality that you need. There might be cases where you actually want to have actual geometry to manipulate. And Houdini 20 has us covered here as well. We have a node for this. This is the feather uncondensed node. If you wire a feather in here and activate this node, take a look at the point display. Now we have actual Houdini geometry and to write the changes that we might want to make here to write those back to our actual feather, we have a feather match uncondensed node like this. And the three inputs of a feather workflow go into here and the change feather goes into here. And now in this area in between, we can just use standard sop nodes to manipulate our feathers. In this case, let's quickly demo this. Let's use a band sop. Let's fire this in. Let's go into a handles tool. Hit B until we have the right orientation of this handle. And then let's hit M to make this also point into the right direction. And now we can curl a feather into a circle. And as we can see, a feather primitive also now has this shape. So I want to disable this and just leave 
the feather in here as is. This is my main feather done. I want to bring in some other feathers that I created earlier. You can also find those in the scene file and I want to keep working with those. So three new feathers created in exactly the same workflow as you saw here. The only thing that I have to watch out for when creating multiple feathers is that each feather should have a unique name. Again, this is using the name of this feather template from ShapeNode. And this is my short fluffy base feather. This is my short fluffy all feather. And this is my long unfluffy feather. And if I have all those feathers created, I can simply drop down a merge node and merge all those feathers into a single geo stream. If we jump back into our top viewport and zoom out a bit, we now have some other entries in our feather atlas. Now, if you're working with a feather atlas like this, you probably at some point, maybe just as a temporary option, want to use this feather atlas also as a UV texture too quickly texture all those different feathers. So how can we do this? This is something where I think no official workflow exists, but I found a nice little hack, so let's build this. We want to manipulate the data on the actual feather geometry, so all those barbs as well. So again, let's in here use a feather uncondensed node. What I also want to bring in is a grid. And I want to give this grid a size that exactly matches my background image. So in this case, this will be a size of 6.93 by 4.92, like this. Now this should exactly match our background image, which it does. Then I also want to bring in a UV texture to match the UVs of our background image. I want to set the scale to minus one on the y-axis and also add an offset of one on the y-axis. And then finally, we bring in a point VOP and our feathers go into the first input and our grid goes into the second input. And basically for each point position, I want to look up the UV coordinate on that grid and simply write it to the feather. To do this, we first of all need to jump into our VOP. I want to start out with an XYZ disk node. This needs our grid geometry, a current points position like this. And then I want to bring in a primitive attribute node or a prim UV node. This needs a grid and also the primitive number and prim UV attribute that we grab from XYZ dust. With this node, we want to grab the UV attribute and write it out with I bind export node, set this to a vector and call it UV and finally connect it to the output of a prim UV node. Like this, now our UVs on the feathers have changed. Let's write those back to our original feather geometry with a feather match uncondensed node and we're in our feathers up here. I'll change feathers here. And now to finally test this, let's drop down a UV quickshade node, wire this in and in here, load in again our feather atlas. And yep, this is looking fine. Now a final thing to do here is cache all of this so that we don't have to rebuild each feather each time we open a scene. Let's turn off time dependent cache Let's set the file name to explicit. Let's get rid of the $f in our file name and finally hit save to disk here. And now with this done, we can drop down a null, call this templates, and we're done with a feather atlas. And in the next video, we can start working on a group. And if you like us and want to support us or just want to learn more about Houdini and in of courses, consider becoming a patron of ours. And to everyone already supporting us, thank you so much. And Tagma in this form would not be possible. With a special thank you going out to Mohamed Alhabri, Mumumia Ichigo, Joseph Horton, and David Aiden. Thanks so much, guys.